Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and the night before the show started, HP and Intel hosted the Mission Critical Innovation Awards, and one of the finalists who went on to win the best new application category is a company called Secure64, and I'm here with Steve Goodbarn to talk about their DNS caching solution and why it won best new application. What would you like to know? Um, I, I think uh, one of the things um, that helped us win the award is that uh, DNS is maybe a forgotten uh, um, piece of the infrastructure when it comes to mission critical applications. Um, the internet is dependent on the DNS. If it goes down, you're not getting any voice over IP phone calls, you're not getting um, mobile applications are dead, the cloud is dead. Everything depends upon the DNS. It is the world's most distributed database. And um, about 80% of the DNS uses uh, um, one type of software, uh, BIME software, which is Berkeley Internet Naming Daemon, which is very, very good. That's why it has 80% of the market. But it doesn't allow for genetic diversity. And uh, there are vulnerabilities. There was a vulnerability uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, the week before Thanksgiving, that required some extensive patching uh, among the major carriers. Not something you want to do on the eve of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, so we provide an alternative, and we built it uh, upon um, HP's uh, mission-critical servers, uh, which have some unique features that aren't found in x86 or RISC uh, servers out there. Yeah, so we were talking about, and, and all of the mission-critical awards were around the Itanium uh, architecture that, that is unique to HP and Intel. And what is it about that particular infrastructure that is more secure than, than anything else? Um, well, uh, going back, I'll, I'll give you a little history. My co-founder is a guy named Bill Worley, who was one of the de uh, was the lead developer at HP of PA Risk. He was chief scientist of HP, and he also worked on the um, PA Wideword, which became Itanium. Itanium from the get-go was architected for security and performance. It has parallelism, it has protection IDs and compartmentalized memory that allow you to store a secret in memory. And no other architecture has these features. So it allows us to really lock up our entire code base is encrypted. Uh, and we can do that while still giving a very, very fast uh, performance. And uh, we've built into, we have our own uh, IO um, stack and we built in denial of service uh, mitigation into that stack and we can do that at uh, very low to almost no latency. So there's no performance hit, uh, but you get the protection. So DNS, it stands right out at the front of the web. It's exposed to all the bad guys. You try to put a lot of firewalls and things in front of it, it's going to slow down performance. You just, the big carriers can't do that. So uh, we don't need any types of uh, antivirus or firewall protections. We can, we can be on the edge and um, we can store secrets like crypto. We, we do all of our crypto in software. We don't, we don't need any add-on devices for that. What is it about your particular implementation uh, of DNS that is different than Bind? I mean, obviously the security features, but I mean, like, what what else about it makes it unique? Um, well, it's it's very high performance. Um, utilizing uh, Itanium, we get we have a performance advantage over Bind, and we also have a capacity advantage. One of the things that can happen uh, with uh, DNS is you can suffer a denial of service attack, and so the carriers typically run their DNS servers under very low loads, so that you have burstable capacity. We can allow you to run closer to the red line. Um, and we can handle that D because of our DDoS mitigation, uh, we can handle that traffic load. So you can do it on, on uh, fewer servers than you would otherwise need. Um, most, most people don't, the carriers tend to be very cautious, uh, so we haven't seen people actually reduce the number of servers, but it just gives them greater capacity in the face of attacks or just you know, flash crowds, volumes uh, of traffic that hit. Now, what kind of companies really benefit from using this? I mean, should everybody be switching to a secure DNS or is that sort of, uh, it just depends on the use case? 
I think everybody should uh, switch to a DNS. Right now, our markets are primarily the tier one carriers, the very large uh, telecom companies. Um, they have five nines of reliability, they have customers with service level agreements. They always have to be on, they always have to be answered. Um, that, you know, cloud computing depends on these carriers, um, mobile applications are dependent on them, so really everything. It, it's kind of a, you know, it is a database that is mission critical to uh, everything connected to the internet, everything mobile and everything in the cloud. So that market, the people who maintain the internet uh, are very keen to have the types of uh, features that we have. If there was anything else you wanted people to know about uh, security related to DNS, what would that be? Um, I, maybe the last thing, DNS security extensions, DNSSEC is being slowly ro rolled out. Uh, we built that the initial automated uh, system for DNSSEC under a contract with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. And I think that is something that we need to push ahead because there are a lot of things that uh, DNSSEC will allow us to do in the future that will greatly improve security of the internet and uh, will also uh, make it very efficient for people. It will, will help the share of wallet that goes to security uh, will not have to be as great in the future with, with that deployed. And it's a whole separate conversation to get into that into detail, so. And, and maybe we should have gone into this at the beginning, but for, for somebody who's sort of more of a, a lay person that, that wouldn't necessarily understand the implications of DNS being hijacked in some capacity, um, what, are the, what are the risks to the end user? Like, let's say I'm going to, to buy something online, what is my risk of that happening? Well, the risk would be, um, if you are going online and you don't have DNSSEC or you have, you use a provider whose DNS has been what's called cash poisoned, you could be going online to purchase something from a merchant and the worst situation would be you are proxied to another server, it's called a man in the middle attack, and they gather all of your, your buy credentials, your credit card, um, PayPal information, um, so they have all the information they need in order to, you know, use your credit card for bogus transactions. Um, that's one vulnerability. Well, and, Probably and, and just the worst one is also. Well, just to clarify for a second, though. So, like, even if it's a HTTPS connection, they could still theoretically do that. S SSL HTTP, yes, because the connection can be to the man in the middle, and then he does the same thing with the merchant. So they can be in the middle of you. With DNSSEC, that cannot happen. Um, but. If you were cash poisoned, if your provider was cash poisoned, that could happen to you and you would be none the wiser. You, you did your transaction with the merchant, everything was fine, you, you had the goods delivered, but someone has your credit card numbers. So, so that's a risk. I think an even bigger risk is a denial of service attack that takes down the web. So think of it, I'm, I'm at a conference in Vienna right now. What if all of my flight information was on my, my phone and I couldn't get access to that information. It, you know, the, the internet was down. My mobile provider was down because of a denial of service attack. That's really a disaster for people. For merchants, for online merchants this time of the year, um, the volume of e-commerce that would be, you know, from just an hour long disruption can be significant. I mean, it could make or break a, a retailer. So um, that's the real risk. Uh, it may not happen, but it certainly could. There are any number of people who could uh, attack the web right now. DNS um, can also be used, um, it's called a reflected flood, where you contaminate the caching servers and then those are used to, as kind of a bot army to, to attack other people with spam. So, um, um, you know, I, I would, if you have a carrier, they should focus on their DNS. It's, it's a hidden thing, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's a, a critical part of our inner infrastructure and I, um, and, and, and believe me, the large carriers are very aware of these situations. They work hard to make sure they run 24 by seven. Well, congratulations on your award. Thank you.